Uh, so uh, welcome. This is the this is going to be the uh, Aether Raids defense recap. Um, so I guess going forward, I don't necessarily plan to make this like every every you know every week we're gonna go over the recap and and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't necessarily plan not to, but I think it's important to realize that uh, while like it takes a while to change your your arena defense because it takes a lot of investments, right? This isn't a game where just like, oh, tomorrow, next week I'm just gonna do this or next week I'm just gonna do that. Like, if you're gonna put it on your defense, it's gonna take a considerable amount of investments, and, and those investments don't happen uh, week to week or, or like day to day, week to week or anything like that. They're they're usually sort of uh, go as far as month to month, if that. You know, it's maybe like several months at a time. Um, but so thinking back, right, the first one of these that I made was uh, just to look at a new defense, right? What's going on here? And then the second one was sort of a control, was sort of looking at like, this is what um, it used to look like, this is how it performed. Um, it's kind of hard to have a control, right? Because the, 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 the situations aren't the same. The two seasons are very different from each other. But uh, to some degree, we can see where things lose and where things uh, end up winning anyway. Um, uh, but today, we're going to go back and take a look. Um, Take a look at a few things. Um, one of the things I want to focus on a lot today is going to be um, something I brought up in my in my defense video, um, the like the actual talking about the uh, like the setup of it and all that. Uh, I mentioned a uh, fortress res defense Camilla build over the Fury build, uh, and today I want to kind of look at you know does that seem more viable? Because Camilla is really one of the more let's go back. Well, let's just take a look. Camilla is one of the more important roles on here, right, in this flyer ball, because right, she's the she's the anchor position. People move around her; they need her to be there and provide you know, not not only that, but provide you know huge buffs of you know plus seven to, to attack and speed. Um, so I think you know she's very important to have, right? So let's go take a look at defense. So defense we're in the top one hundred, or not top one hundred, but you know, it, within this bracket, we haven't fallen below, and we're we're decently actually pretty well in there. But like I, like I said in the Aether Raids uh, offense video, you want to take that with a grain of salt in terms of uh, how well it actually performed, uh, who we matched up against. Uh, we, we got sort of pared down a lot, I think. Um, so let's take a look here. I'm not going to go into in-depth on each one because I already did that in another video. And uh, we're just going to sort of take a look and see, you know, what we lose to and and, and um, how, how, how common it is. <laughs> Um, so I think we had a success against this one. <laughs> I already forgot. Uh, okay, so from last time, uh, I realized how big a deal it was that, like, Camilla, you can just stand here and bait her out. So I, I decided to rearrange uh, these buildings here to sort of block this off, to just sort of entice. I mean, it's not going to stop anybody. They're still just going to, like, take these down and move forward. But, you know, at least something is better than nothing, right? And right off the bat, I want to say I, I, I like this Death Knight. Uh, He's really, like, I would build <laughs> this Death Knight if I had him. Um, this attack, this little attack speed, I guess, is just to make sure he doesn't get doubled. Yeah, he doesn't get doubled on the initiation. I don't actually know what he does. Um, so if there's bonuses on them, he gets four to everything. And they can't make a follow-up attack. I have no idea what this lull attack speed is here for. I really do feel like maybe a lull attack defense would have been better. Um, but yeah, I'm really confused. Uh, right off the bat though, like obviously we can see she, she, they've got um, Fjorm and they've got the Death Knight, which are both uh, blues. So, I mean, we're going to do decently well against them. Um, funnily enough, talking about uh, what's going on there. Oh, I better go take off the animations real quick. Uh, we don't want to be here forever. So actually, I'm going to pay attention to the time this time. We'll see how long this takes. Um, again, I don't want to like to repeat a lot of stuff, so we'll... Uh, uh, certain things that I've already said before, we'll see how they go. Uh, so what's going on here? Who can hit that spot there? Is it her? Oh, it is her. Very interesting. Um, that's kind of not something I want. I don't know why. Did I not see that before? I don't know. It's weird. Um, yeah, but basically, you can just put Altina here, and, and she's going to die. Um, which is not good. This would be a lot better if I had, obviously, the the duo, uh, yeah, the duo Byleth. Yeah, so she's just gonna die, which is fine to some degree.
Okay, so this flyer ball actually stayed pretty uh, pretty nice. I mean, look at this. Um, I mean, he obviously lost the ground orders, which kind of sucks, but uh, uh, she's in, in the most defensible position. Uh, these two forwards are here, and then, you know, she's there. So that's, that's pretty cool. I'm glad this turned out so well. Um, so I got to kill her, uh, snipe him, and basically that's how that ended. Uh, and then they just left. Okay. So that was more, uh, this person went in with a lot of blues, a lot of very vulnerable blues. Um, again, this chair, this uh, the way these chairs are set up here, maybe uh, might... I have to really think about what's going on here. How, how I need to I need to find a way to block this off. Um, the fact that like like a wind sweep, uh, a wind sweep, Byleth would be great there, um, but then you lose to Brunia. Uh, so you know it, it's gonna take some time to figure out what's going on. What I have to do, what I should do there. Maybe I should just move this here and uh, let them barrel up through here. But uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea either. Yeah, it, it'll it'll take some time, um, but yeah, that's that's one of the few things you can patch up from week to week is is your your uh, your structures. So let's go see here, because I mean it's it's really bad to have. Oh, okay. So then I changed it here, right? Yeah, yeah. I changed it here because this way, like, there's nothing here to block them, and if they clear this, she's gonna hit here, but then she's gonna follow up here, right? So that that. Okay, so I kind of fixed that a little bit to some degree. I mean, it's still going to be a problem. As you can see, we lost in this one. Um, we're getting panicked by something. Is it a panic ploy? Oh, it is, yeah. Our panic, pa panic manner. Um, let's go take a look here again. Uh, Irvin Ike is the bane of really everyone's existence. And, and this is, I mean, if you want to look at cookie cutter uh, offense, um, just go get a Layla and invest in your uh, Ike, in your bike, and you're basically tier 27 guaranteed. Um, so in terms of like, I mean, I think that's pretty cool to me anyway, like as a new player, right? You get a free peony. This is Astra season. I don't know what she's doing here. This is very confusing. Um, but Naga and Altina aren't that hard to get. I mean, you just kind of want at least one of each and then, you know, build up your merges, right? So that's what you got to save your orbs for. Um, Fjorm, you get Fjorm for free. I mean, this could be anything really. You just need a bonus unit. So you'll, you'll have them as time goes on. Um, uh, then bike, right? Bike, I think you get, I think they give you a bike for free because I have a bike and I don't remember pulling him. So there you go. You have a bike for free. Uh, and then you just got to pull on Layla for one Layla and you basically, you know, you won already. Like you're in, you're going to be, you'll probably be placed higher than I will. Uh, if you're consistent enough and you, and you do a good enough job of taking care of like, you know, making sure you don't, um, do a certain defense, but there's not a whole lot of defenses that can deal with this. Uh, Layla goes in there and snipes something disables one of your traps and then swaps out with bike and then he's unkillable uh so you know i think uh i think it's great that there's such a like a what, what's the, like just a, a new uh an early game like new player friendly like easily obtainable goal right is like you start playing and you start like they're still giving you a lot of very powerful things right away so that's pretty cool um but yeah let's just kind of see how we lost uh just for the sake of it i guess Uh, I don't know why. Oh, I guess they're waiting for the bull tower to kick in. Uh, but I feel like yeah, she could. She, she's probably just gonna stand here, disable this trap, and then hit her, and then swap out, and then he'll be here, and then just take everything that everyone's dishing out. Yeah. See. So I guess my question is, would she have survived that with uh, Fortress Res Defense? Um, and the answer to that, in my mind, is a very solid maybe. Um, because she got outsped anyway, so she got doubled. Uh, but, I don't know why he's so low on HP. I don't know what happened there. Wasn't paying attention. Um, oh, it's because of this. Yeah, never mind. And, and because of that. And because of this. So, I mean, either way. Well, I mean, that just kind of clinches it. But, I guess in terms of thinking about this, like, going forward, is like, how, would I be able to survive something like that with, um, that a lot better? Yeah, the answer is still kind of tentatively maybe, because... People, I mean, for, for those of you also, the other thing is, you should always have Bolt Tower. Uh, like, if you're playing if you're playing Aether Raids, Bolt Tower should be a high priority. 
It's going to be one of your most uh, effective um, structures on offense. Um, specifically for this reason, because it'll just help you break a lot of defenses. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, just sort of pop a, pop a, pop a guy, uh, swap out with bike, and he didn't leave bike there for some reason. That's very interesting. Unfortunately, Paola moved out of the way. I went into the a position I didn't want her. Uh, and then bike here is more safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we kind of, you know, basically bike did bike things and then that's fine. Um, so first loss came to bike. Again, we still gotta fix that somehow. Uh, Summer Biolith, I don't think we'll will like solve it, but uh, she certainly wouldn't won't uh, won't hurt. Um, okay. Not sure what this team is about. I'm trying to figure out what the plan is here. Yeah, I guess something. Yeah, okay. Um, so that was a success for some reason. Somebody rematched me. Actually, I should be looking at like these names. What if I get to fight against some like YouTubers or something? That'd be pretty cool. Nah, not that high level anyway. Um, we lost here, so let's go take a look at what happened. Uh, to some degree, um, I really, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, probably we should be running, I should be running, um, another flyer here, like another, like two, just two Mirabilises usually is what a lot of people tend to be running these days. Um, I think that's probably the way I should go at some point. <laughs> So that's kind of interesting. She got baited out, so she didn't have the ward stacking, but she still beat her. Very curious. That uh, double Latina attack, like if you don't kill them with that, it kind of tends to bite you in the ass, because like, um, that's just basically two cooldown special charges, like for free. Uh, let's let's see who's gonna what's gonna happen here. Oh, of course, Pala. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of res, so that's that problem. Uh, so this went decent. I took I, I took one of their units and um, yeah. And Duma obviously doesn't do very much back what does she have oh she has the uh, dragon slasher um this one was like wow that dancer did a lot of damage to me uh so that's fine that one uh was kind of interesting um it was uh 50 50 like we, we we managed to kill one of their units uh we baited them out pretty hard uh, or she baited uh, camille out pretty hard she survived thankfully um proceeded to hurt her pretty pretty decently um again the, the question is would that have been would that have worked that way if uh, she didn't have fury? Um, but you know who knows. Uh, so we got attacked here and we lost. Let's take a look at this one. Let's go see what's going on here. Uh, so this looks like Leaf is just gonna do Leaf stuff. Uh, maybe him too. Plus three. Okay. This gives special charge, I think, right? To himself? To infantry units, I think.
This person has the um, the bolt tower in like the prime position. Um, I like to I like it uh, well for this team, right? So if it's here, you're not gonna hit anybody over here, which is kind of sad. But uh, um, they they end up fighting against someone like me, and then there you go, it uh, paid off. So for some reason, even though I had guard, oh, it's because uh, this knocked me out of guard range. Very interesting, yeah. Um, yeah. So again, like I said. Fighting against Leaf is kind of uh, a pain. He's very uh, PvP or PvE oriented, and she didn't dance for some reason. I guess she danced something. Yeah, uh, and that kind of went about as expected. Yeah, it's not a whole lot you can do against Leaf because you have to wait till your turn to possibly do something. By the time your turn comes around, he's already sniped two units and is moved way out of range. <laughs> um, to counter him, like uh, cav lines can counter him decently well because like it's hard to get out of a cav line range uh, to just go in there, snipe something, and leave. But um, you know, it's still very possible. Is the thing. Uh, so we took out a unit here. I think we we saw. Who did we end up taking out? Is that a net? Yeah, it is a net. The Crusher. It's an interesting weapon. Kind of like it, but uh, I don't like the lack of range it has. Um, at least she has more attack than uh, uh, Felicia did with her Felicia's plate. Oh man, I can't wait till uh, we get more flowers. I can just dump them all into Felicia. Um, Felicia and uh, uh, Boki. I'm actually thinking about running uh, using Boki with an attack boon now that we can do that. Because uh, 53 attack is no joke compared to like what she had before. With the with her bow on all the time, it's she's up to 60. Um, that's not counting like the 5 from the foil and all that stuff. Uh, but let's do that. Okay. 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 Oh, I didn't actually kill that person. That's horrible. <laughs> Maybe I should get like an attack boon on uh cuz if if you were here during the um the last video, the discussion video I made on on flyers and what were what's going on with them. Um, you'll know that uh, you'll know that uh, let's see uh, hold on I'll be back uh, anyway yeah like I said uh, if you were here during the flyer like the new uh, the title the new age of flyer stuff um, you'll know that we can get boons and banes on on whatever units, right? Um, Tempest Trials units or, or GHB units, uh, basically grailable units. Uh, and maybe, and I, when, I, I talk, when I talked about uh, Minerva, I was like, well, she doesn't, I don't really know what I could give her. And I think we were, yeah, I think this is not good because it's plus one, that's minus one, yeah. They have all these structures, the whole thing down here is full and they didn't even put the one they needed to put on. It's kind of sad, um, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, like I, like I was saying, um, there didn't seem like a whole lot of purpose to give her any particular um, boon or bane. Like she just seems pretty good all the way around. Like there's no need for it. Um, but I think, but I'm thinking um, maybe like an attack boon might do her good. Like she's usually fast enough. Not to mention she's got plus seven from that from her. Um, but she's usually fast enough to deal with uh, anything that comes her way. So this one seems like I guess the idea is to win with uh, Sangrier or whatever man over here. Is he? Is that the one? Is that what he has? No, it's it's who has Sangria? Is it the? I think it's Lucina. Uh, but yeah, basically it's the idea is to win with him. But it, uh, I have two greens. Let's see what happens here. Um, okay, that's very interesting. So trying to figure out what the strategy here is. They're taking they're taking a mite. A lot of turns to, to do anything here and I popped their uh, whatever structure was right here I think it was the bull tower but who knows ok 
Okay. He's just gonna die. I don't know what, uh, what's going on here. Yeah, I, that was weird. Interesting. So I think uh, Camilla is gonna die there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's gonna go forward. Yeah, that Duma, even with the ground orders, is like having a really hard time doing anything. And uh, Minerva against any real like physical threat is never a pretty sight for the person who has to deal with her. <laughs> Uh, pardon, I was <laughs> I got distracted. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, uh, so yeah, that went about um, about how it could have gone. Um, I don't know what the point, what the idea was with the the placement on the the crom there. I feel like maybe just sitting here and sniping would have been fine. Um, and the more I'm seeing these, the more like the harder it is to like really think of Duma as a part of this team. Um, Giving him the ground orders is, you know, as good as I could have gone, but as good as I could have done. But even then, it's like he's just too reliant on having um, that be close to him every time. Um, and replay, yeah. So we got successful there. Ba so I mean, you know, basically my problem is that like a lot of these are uh, a lot of these are um, what's the word? Are one in spite of him so basically I'm having to play a 5v uh, 5v5 which I mean that's kind of defeating one of the purposes of the advantages of defense that you have six on five um, but yeah I mean I guess like yeah because so far I mean all the all the replays we've seen I mean none of these have been like oh Duma did something right like they're usually just Duma's worthless in all of them um, but yeah I mean I guess we'll see what happens here I feel like maybe um, what might be prudent here. Yeah, see, this is kind of hard to like to fight against. He just comes in, um, pops you real quick, and then leaves. There's not much you can do about that. Uh, and then she's gonna die. Yep. Okay, so we sniped one. What I think might be decent would be like if I had like a Tabarn or something like again a three range movement unit, and I could go out there and do something. Uh, but as it stands now, it's like you really reliant on like hopefully uh, you can do something like just go out there and like pick off a unit real quick or something like that. <laughs> uh, but as it stands, it's it's like wow, seventy four damage. <laughs> Um, so they ended up just leaving. I probably just didn't want to like <laughs> deal with the aether loss from that. Uh, and then this is the last defense we ran into. Okay, so we're doing pretty good time. Uh, usually this is like an hour, but uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the biggest lesson we can learn from this is like consider moving Duma, like moving away toward moving. Uh, further away from Duma uh, on the on this team, uh, like I said originally, it's like part of it was like, oh, it's not that big a deal um, because you know Duma can um, you can tank to a tank to a d certain degree, but uh, for one, it's not worth it, and two, he has damage, right? But you know that's not worth it either because he doesn't he can't execute the damage is the problem. Like you can have all the damage, you can have infinite damage, and then you know if you can't do anything with it, then you know that's how it is. So let's see how this one's gonna go. This is the last one, so 
uh, we can get out of here uh, sooner than normal. <laughs> so I think what lost them here is they don't really have a, a, a good strategy. I mean, I'm not sure what the point is here. Um... Well, maybe Duma will, oh, okay. Yeah, because a lot of times, like, yeah. Like, see, here's here's the issue, right? She, the AI prioritized moving her out of position to hit her, rather than, like, capitalizing on the fact that Duma has ground orders. And he could have, like, teleported to Camilla, stood here and hit her and killed her. I mean, I don't think she would have, he would, she would have survived it, hit, hits from Duma. Uh, but instead, the AI didn't, go that way and now Duma is back here doing nothing where he could have been slightly more forward um, that's kind of an issue I'm having is that in situations where Duma might be able to do something um, Camilla's AI kind of takes over so it's like why is he here you know what I mean um, but yeah Oh look, he did. He did move. Okay, so there we go. He he, uh, he moved, but he didn't attack or anything. Didn't. You want him kind of in a forward position, right? Because of uh, uh, how tanky he is and how much how, how threatening he can be. Uh, I guess we got all of these kills last time, or this time. Do they have? Yeah, I guess it's it's five and five. Okay. I don't know. Usually when you when you full wipe someone else's team, it's like they don't have the the tower uh, fully maxed or something like that. Um, and there's that. Yeah, so at this point, they're just kind of playing just to, for the sake of it, really, because um, there's not much you can do here. Uh, yep, and then the Pala. So that was that. Um, so major takeaways, uh, you know, fix up. For one, some of the real losses we had um, were, again, Leafs and Bikes. Um, some of the other losses were just kind of random strays, I think. Um, some of the real trouble we had were, were random strays, or were, were the main, the core problems that we've always had. Um, the other things were just kind of random stray stuff. Um, uh, what's becoming more and more evident, of course, as we go on, is that the two weak points of this team are going to be the... Um, the Micaiah and the um, what's his name and the Duma, um, so that is I mean that's about it really, not a whole lot more to it than that. Um, yeah, so uh, you know hopefully something can be gleaned from this. I mean ultimately again it goes back to like similar stuff. It's like Ashnard, <laughs> you really want Ashnard, um, and now that uh, you know Claude is out there, if you're less stubborn than I am. Uh, I mean, Ashnard and Claude just seem like a very, um, a very potent combination to have on your defense team. Uh, Claude can give you a decent amount of range with like excessive survivability. Um, but yeah, so you know, look forward to to seeing what what's up with that. Um, you know, keep an eye out on that on defenses now and maybe offenses. Who knows? Uh, Claude might make a good. Uh, not CC Vantage unit in the same way a lot of people use CC Vantages, where it's like, oh, you put him in there and he's just going to one-shot Vantage back. Uh, but maybe, like, the fact that he survived so much, maybe he can actually just brawl with every single person on the team, you know, just, like, back and forth without having to worry about one-shot Vantaging. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. But, uh, like I said, um, Ashnard wouldn't have, like, necessarily won a bunch of these, but he would have certainly made it a lot harder for them to win. Um, a reduction in five... Uh, attack is uh, no joke. It's not something to be underestimated uh, for survivability. Um, and not to mention, it's also like universal, right? So whether a mage comes in or a, or a physical damage dealer, they're going to have it reduced by five. Um, but yeah, so uh, funnily enough, though, I think what kind of what I kind of showed to me a little bit was um, we didn't lose so much to reds, right? There weren't a lot of, I mean, I don't think we lost that. I mean, those Altinos, right? And, and that's something that I want to point out, right? Because I made this team green heavy, but still realizing that Altinos are basically everywhere. And as you saw here, um, this team, despite being so green heavy, can deal with Altinos to some degree. Um, but yeah, so 
it's something to consider. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of viable uh, reds right now. Uh, there, there probably will be in higher tiers, but a lot of people just kind of stick with tried and true stuff. So you're going to find, again, you're going to find the same things over and over again. You're going to find Leafs, you're going to find Bikes, you're going to find, um, yeah, I mean, basically those are the main two, Bikes and then uh, CC Vantage teams uh, are the other thing, which I haven't run into because I guess maybe my team doesn't lend itself uh, good to be CC Vantaged. I mean, I would take a CC Vantage team into mine. Um... Because that's all I have, really. <laughs> I don't have any other choice. Um, but I, it'd probably just be like, yeah, it'd actually be interesting. Maybe uh, one day I'll, I'll make a video and like kind of attack my own team and see see how uh, see how I can deal with it and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it for today. Um, decently short. Again, next week will be the other team. Don't know if I will um, showcase that. Don't know if it really needs to be showcased. Um, it was just the first again last last week. It was just basically there to be like, oh, you know, this is what's going on here. This is how. This is the reason for it. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, good luck to anybody out there this season. Uh, hopefully, next season we can do better as always. Um, and that's that. <laughs>